I'd like to speak about um, rapture. A lot of people think pre-tribulation, mid-tribulation. <clears throat> but what I'm finding out and what I've been thinking about is it actually looks to me, from what I'm reading, is that it won't be any save me before the tribulation begins rapture. So I'm sorry, all you faithful out there that may hold a belief that a pre-tribulation rapture is what will come, because I don't actually find it. <clears throat> now, a lot of people maybe read Daniel or something, and, and that's fine, you know, if you're comfortable with thinking that. There's not a whole lot I can do to sway you except talk to you about what, what I'm reading. And I'll, I'll start off in Matthew 24. Um, and this is when he's on the Mount of Olives. And that's when the disciples ask him, what's going to be the signs of your coming? And, and then he goes on to tell them all the signs, you know, wars, rumors of wars, and, and uh, nation rising against nation, all those things that we already pretty well know and have heard, but when you get down to verse 15, he says, When therefore ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation, spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place, then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains, let him which is on the house stop not come down to take anything out of the house, neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes, and woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. Pray ye that your flight not be in the winter, neither on the Sabbath. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world, to this time, no, nor ever shall be. Okay, so he's mentioning it again. Tribulation. Immediately after the tribulation, this is verse 29, the days shall be, the sun shall be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light. The stars shall fall from heaven, the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory, and he shall send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. They shall gather together his elect. His elect. Those are, those are not the non-believers and stuff. Those are all the true faithful. Now we're going to skip on over to, let's see, we're going to go on over to John 5, verse what, 25, it says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming, and now is, when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God. And they that hear shall live. And 29, well, we'll go to 28. Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming, in which all that are in the graves shall hear his voice. And shall come forth, they shall have done good unto the resurrection of life, and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. So that's two resurrections, good and damnation. Let's see. We're going to go on over to Acts 24. Well, we'll start with, we'll go ahead and uh, go down to verse 15 in Acts 24. 
and have hope towards God, which they themselves also allow, that there shall be a resurrection of the dead, both of the just and the unjust. We're going to go over to Thessalonians, chapter 4. We're going to start with 13, verse 13. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. The dead people that are faithful in Christ are going to rise first. Then we which are alive and remain, the faithful in Christ that are alive, walk in the earth, shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Well, that's why there's going to be two people in a, you know, two people in a field. One guy is taken, one guy is not. There's a faithful and a non-faithful, and a faithful gets uh, the living person faithful gets taken and the unfaithful gets left. Now we go to Thessalonians. Thessalonians 2, chapter 2. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him that you... Be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter as from us. As that the day of Christ is at hand, and let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first. And that the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. So, it's giving you a hint. There's going to be a falling away of the church. And Antichrist is going to be making his presence known and saying, I'm Antichrist, and he's going to go sit in the temple and do the abomination of desolation. So you're being told that you're going to see these things. Not that you're going to be not here to see these things. Verse 5, remember you not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things? We're going to go over to Revelation 20, verse 4. And it says, uh, I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus, for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, Neither his image, neither had received his mark in their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. So there's going to be people that don't get taken in the first resurrection of the faithful. But they still have a chance to go to heaven. Because if they, if they stop their ways, evil ways, and they turn away from them, and they become faithful during that tribulation time, during Antichrist time, during abomination of desolation time, if they survive through it, then they can go to heaven. 
and be rewarded. Also, those that don't survive, that become faithful and are beheaded, that's who they're talking about. When you go to the end of the chapter, a lot of people say, well, the old book's been changed and rewritten. It's a fable. It's uh, this, that, and the other. Well, you come back here to Revelation 22, verse 19. Start off from there. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. So you get really shaft brought down on you if you do that to these words. <clears throat> so I'm saying that what I'm getting out of what I've, I'm reading and what I'm seeing this these things saying, there's a constant uh, reminder that there's two resurrections. The final second resurrection is, is whenever all the other people that are in the grave that didn't get resurrected and taken with those that are caught up, the faithful caught up with the original batch of, of faithful dead and taken. Those in the second resurrection, they're the evil. That's why they didn't get taken. They get resurrected later. And then all those people that stayed evil during tribulation and Antichrist time and abomination of desolation time that alleged themselves and took the mark, they get theirs too. That's their resurrection and judgment. And we know where they go. They end up in the lake of fire. So I'm not finding anything that is leading me to believe that when these times come, we're going to get removed so that we don't have to go through any of it. Because there's too much stuff here that is saying what I've just shown you saying when you see these things so if you're going to see these things you're still here but bad times are coming I'm not going to get around it God might put it off for just a little while but it has to fulfill it is his word and it will fulfill so contemplate the things that I've shown you. And ask your pastor, your minister about it. If they try and tell you about a pre-tribulation rap rapture, show them what I've talked to you about in the different chapters that I've, I've mentioned. Ask them to prove it to you. Beyond a shadow of a doubt. Well, I think I've had it proven to me beyond a shadow of a doubt. <clears throat> you know, there was a time whenever I hoped the same thing, that we wouldn't have to go through anything. But according to this, there truly is two resurrections. And according to what, what I've seen here and what I've read and what I've thought about hard and long, Good guys go in the first resurrection. Bad guys come out at the last resurrection. Bad people with them. So the Lord be with you all. Put on the armor of God. Take up the sword and defeat the evil. And God bless every one of you.